What's up, guys? Faruqi Brothers here, back with another video. And today for you guys, we're going to be talking about Zack Snyder's Justice League and the November 17th Us United event. So let's just kick it right off. This morning, Zack Snyder shared a new trailer, an updated trailer for his upcoming limited series on HBO Max. And obviously, Zack has been showing up in a couple of our friend streams the last few days, and he mentioned on one of them that for him, the black and white version on IMAX is like the ultimate version that he would want to put out. And to kind of give a hint of that, this trailer that he dropped this morning was in black and white. To kind of, you know, go in line with what Zach has been sharing these last few years, honestly, through Vero about um, when, when hyping up the project to get it out in the first place. So we uh, come to today, and obviously, unlike last year, which you saw, we were a big part of. Um, what was going on last year's event, trying to get people to tweet out and, and get hyped. Uh, this year is more celebratory. This year it's more like we know that we're getting the thing. You know, we're getting Zack Snyder Justice League. The quest to release the Snyder Cut is done. So what's next? And I think um, before we go around the table and, and talk to everybody, I'm going to start off by just explaining Us United. Um, so Us United is uh, a new campaign to, well, basically unite the fandom, but more importantly, probably most importantly, is to keep the fandom centered towards the goal of uh, the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. And Zack Snyder has routinely said the fandom is really close to hitting $500,000 uh, donated uh, in the name of Autumn Snyder, his daughter. So uh, Snyder shared this morning a tribute fund uh, from AFSP with a goal of $50,000. The link will be in the description below. And if you guys have a couple of dollars to spare, you know, nothing too crazy, you can drop it in. And, you know, the way the fans have always been, it's a big collection of individuals putting little by little. And then when you look at it from far, it's like, well, how the hell did these group of fans raise this much money? Well, that's what kind of Us United is because when the fans do unite to do something, not only do you get a project like the Snyder Cut coming out, which is a purely fan-driven project, you also do um, and help save real lives uh, through preventing people from suicide, which is obviously a crazy thing, especially now suicide rates are up because of uh, the pandemic. So people are more uh, confused, they're more alone, they're feeling more... Uh, out of it so this um all this helps so we want to start with that now let's jump in and move into uh our excitement for Zack Snyder Justice League what we're, what we're most excited for what we think are uh what's to come you know all that fun stuff without giving too much away uh so we'll start with Zian uh, kind of just what you're you know out from the way I always see it is that today is kind of like you can think back like how far have we come you know and we're here now. So kind of give me your thoughts on the whole journey, especially with comic book debate as um, that focal point from our end. Yeah, like you said, it has been a pretty long journey. I mean, since Just League first came out, I think like a couple of years after, Yushras tweeted that, you know, there is a real cut out there that's different from what we saw in theaters with Jackie Eccles' score and um, many other changes. And since then, we've been doing our work behind the scenes and sometimes in front of the scenes. We haven't really been I don't know a lot of people say we haven't been like in the fandom like um, sphere type thing when we do this, but we did it our own way. We got um, we got a lot of interviews. We got uh, Clay Enos, Jay Oliver, Larry Fong, um, Fabian Wagner, all these people, and used our our platform to try to create buzz and create um, to provide new information and um, like to make it more public to people who might not know what's going on or what the saga even is. And you know all that. Obviously, the fans. We also did. Um, lots of charity events and uh, obviously the AFSP has been like the most uh, has been like the true center of what the Santa Cut means and what we're actually fighting for and the donations and everything. It just speaks volumes to how um, to what this fandom really is and what we can accomplish when we are united, like us United um, banner means. So in terms of that, just, it's been a long journey and seeing Zach talking about his trailer for his film, really breaking it down with, additional um afsp campaign to donate i think it all come together it um really gives a sense of accomplishment and sense of like we got this and we got here together and now it's time to like rejoice and celebrate that this film is finally coming out and on top of that all the good that has come up from this whole campaign and then you know moving on from uh kind of the afsp stuff to the film itself i mean umar you tweeted this morning that how for you you know seeing this film in black and white, the full four hours Lord of the Rings style in IMAX would be your favorite way to see it as well. So talk to me about that because we've had a lot of discussions. Obviously, we knew well in advance, even as far as last November, that this thing would come out probably as a limited series. But we know that in the future, uh, there is probably going to be a route where 
especially as this pandemic cools down a little while, that we can see this film in its full totality, again, Lord of the Rings style. So tell me about that. Tell me about your preferences and just in general, like the black and white, the color. Tell me like what you're, what, what's, what's getting at you right now. Well, I think that when he was um, releasing the, like the stills throughout, throughout the past three years, I think we kind of noticed like, well, well, one, it's all black and white, but also it's just cool to see a different, like a very different way of like a film. You know what I mean? Like most of, most superhero movies, especially in the genre, like a lot of it is very uh, visual and colorful and, and like it's, it's very much like in your face type thing, right? While uh, Zack Snyder's work is a little bit more like, like aesthetically he's, a, he, he, he's darker, like he's, he's toned down. Um, and then he talked a little bit about how his, his like fully realized intended vision was like four hours black and white. Uh, he says he wants to work on it more, uh, in terms of making it look like, whatever he wants to like shade it more properly or whatever the case may be. Uh, I'm just more interested in seeing like that fully intended vision. And I think because we don't often get like a very different way of watching superhero movies that is very unique to see a four hour black and white just to see superhero movie. Um, I think that's just very, it's a very unique thing in this space. So I think that that's the main reason. Um, and obviously um, just from the trailer alone, it looks, it looks wild, man. I, I feel like it's going to be, I don't really talk about this before, but I feel like it's going to take number one. I think like it'll easily take, because if they say using words like Lord of the Rings, I mean, this is exactly what, especially for us, for like, that's exactly what we want. We want to see something that is that with, the, with that level of depth uh, in this space. Right. So, and, you know, speaking about kind of not only the film and what we're excited for, but it's kind of like this, it's like the perfect storm in a sense of what's happening. Because now look at it, this year we virtually got no superhero movies at all. We got Birds of Prey early in the year, but it feels like five years ago with the way this year has been, right? And I'm looking on, I'm looking on social media and you're seeing the buzz. You see people like Jake Tapper, CNN journalist, 3 million uh, followers. And he's like, this is surreal. Like he's hyped for it. You see Linda Carter, the original Wonder Woman jumping in. And we're not used to that as a fandom. We're not used to when Zack Snyder puts the trailer out, it's everyone's piling on and saying negative stuff. And then there's very few people who are like, okay, we got to defend this. Or, and, and now it's become kind of this thing where, this feels like an event. This feels seminal in so many ways. And to the point where, um, to the point where it's like, this is bigger than Tenet almost, right? Because everyone's like, when Tenet's coming out, it's gonna be like, is this, is the movie theater industry gonna survive? Was hinged on how Tenet was gonna do. Now this is a, all that money that people, that studios are putting into streaming, this will make or break it. This, and we all are expecting this to do like gangbuster numbers. This is gonna do crazy numbers, but, when this does well, what the, what's the message? The message is that people want more. And we're going to get bigger projects with these high-caliber filmmakers like Zach to put their vision and go as far as they want. That's why you see things like uh, Joker. You see things like Matt Reeves the Batman. You see projects where filmmakers are being put first. And that's what you want to see. And I think um, a lesson has been learned is students are not going to be messing with too many films, especially in no, especially Zach's films, but in general, you're not going to see too many people getting their visions destroyed the way... Zach's vision was destroyed because of the lesson learned, because the lesson the fans kind of taught, the lesson that uh, the whole kind of what you call the trend, the trend is moving a certain way. And that kind of leads me to Samir's point, uh, to Samir, my question for Samir rather. Um, with Justice League coming out next year, obviously 2021 is getting more and more packed. The Batman got moved to 2022, but and Wonder Woman is still kind of an A wall. How important do you think uh, Zach Snyder's Justice League is? Uh, to the superhero movie landscape? Well, considering that the pandemic has destroyed the theater industry, the, and there's, there's no guarantee that theaters will open up next year and be successful. So it's all riding on the streaming industry. And uh, this is the biggest project in that streaming industry. So yeah, it rides a lot on this. And I guess the last point I want to make, kind of jumping off everybody's point, is the importance of, I think, journalists covering this film. I think uh, there's been a bad rap given on a lot of things. I'm not going to get into specifics, but the whole idea of, people who are covering the Snyder Cut are somehow fanboys or whatever the case might be. Uh, I think there's, there's something to say about that, that uh, 
someone has to cover it and cover it and partially and cover it fairly. And I think this is something a moment you had to cover. And we, I know people back then, you say it's really states this, you're covering it with a serious look at the industry and everyone will clown you. But then three years later, now it's coming out. They're like, oh, we were just fanboys. Well, I think that narrative just to kind of um, uh, cut it right there. I think it's important that we have journalists that cover all sides of the entertainment industry, not just the people you like, not just the, the films that you order that are going to get good reviews on Rotten Tomatoes. It's about looking at all sides of the spectrum and, and covering it fairly. And I think that's something that uh, the comic book debate is interested in doing. That's something the Fruity Bros is all about. So it's something that we're going to continue doing. But I digress. Us United, that's today. Check out the hashtag. All the cast is using it. People are putting out new images. Zach is sharing new stuff with Steppenwolf. Jason Moore saying new stuff and all of it's going towards the bigger deal, which is the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention and donating what you can to what you can to Autumn Snyder's uh, tribute fund. What do you guys think about the new black and white trailer? Let us know in the comments below and join the debate. From myself, from Zayan, from Umar, and from Samir, we're the Faruqi Brothers, and we'll see you next time. Peace out.